Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. It's Friday the 1st of October. Uh, today's podcast is going to be um, talking a lot about Emo next week, which is where eight of us are travelling to. It's one of the world's largest machine tool fairs. This year it's hosted in Milan. So we're going to be talking about that in this week's show. I'm Paul Jones, the Managing Director and Founder of MTD CNC, and I'll be hosting today's podcast as always. Joined um, today by two... Uh, I can't remember what I normally call you. Yeah. We called us cohorts before. Yeah. I, can't even, I can't even think of a new name. Legends. Use, use so many. Legends, as we normally say with you. So I'm joined by Colin Griffiths and Gio, uh, becoming a fairly regular uh, pair on this uh, podcast. Gio, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Paul. Not you had a good week. In fact, you've got most of the activity this week that we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's about. been a busy week. Yeah, yeah. went to Fanuc on Monday, uh, done some Bison Tech Corners in the studio Tuesday, and I was at uh, WAF Group yesterday. Okay, well, keep your powder dry, as they say. Uh, Colin, are you all right? You've had a, oh, quite the transverse of that, or converse of that, if that's the right word. You've had quite a quiet week. Well, I haven't had a quiet week. I just haven't been out on the road, Paul, that's all. <laughs> So there we go. Nothing You'd never there. have a quiet week, though, would you? No. I'm, I'm a touch concerned, though, because you said Emo is all about machine tools and stuff. I, I it think goes beyond that. It's, it's a machine tool fair. It's one of the world's. And it's, it's labelled as a machine I tool I got fair. the wrong end of the email because I've gone out and I've got a long black coat and I've dyed my hair black and I've got some makeup. So <laughs> I think I'm going to the wrong event. <laughs> You've been before, though, haven't you? To the one you're talking about, not yeah, absolutely, not the yeah. All the goths were there. We had yeah. a great time. Uh, so coming up, we're going to talk about um, some of the highlights that we've uh, seen on this week's uh, MTD CNC website, which is a brand new website, which of course um, you can visit to check out not just what's available here in the UK, but around uh, different continents as well. Um, I'm going to talk this week about Mark uh, 3D uh, HEL performance. We're going to talk about um, the differences between two Star GB sliding head lathes. Um, something that I know Geo will know a lot about a four jaw compensation. Chuck from Tame and um, quite a sort of uh, new innovative deburring tool from um, or that we saw in action at LBBC Beechwood. So they're just some of the things we're going to talk about as well as some DMG Mori videos. Um, first of all, though, the petrol crisis. What have, petrol, how, how what have petrol you coped? What a load of old pony, honestly. Have you, have you, well, mind you, you, you've obviously been out a lot this week. Do you, have you had any problems no, getting no fuel? No, really. I, 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 I filled up on. Um, Sunday, and th- and I've been okay all week. Yeah, really. So, yeah, not too bad. So even though you've been up and down to Sheffield and back to here, that you I've the done tank about is three hundred. You drive the petrol tank, he's yeah. not going to run out, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's been fine. And, and, but the petrol, t- I've, I've seen a few closed, but it's not been too bad in the Midlands or. It's near just me. been unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? I mean, I Tuesday night I went to pick my daughter up from uh, a, a dance thing, and I was supposed to be at Mazak. Dancer, not darts. Oh, not darts, sorry, 180. <laughs> and I was supposed to be at Mazak the following morning and I was speaking to Joe and I looked at my tank and it was like less than a quarter. And I thought, oh, so I'm just going to stick some fuel in. And literally, I could not find any anywhere. Really? Spent about an hour and a half driving around and eventually I found somewhere they'd only let me put £30 in, which I did. But Two things. Having travelled with you quite a bit, you only ever put ten pounds worth. Yeah, of yeah. I actually put more in this time than did I normally you, did do. Did you put yeah. more than thirty quid worth? <laughs> no, no, I put thirty quid, which is no, normally sh- what I normally. No, do. really. Yeah, because yeah. I, I thought, you know what, it's a petrol crisis. Sod everybody else. I'm going to fill up. So I kept, it kept going and going. It went past the thirty quid. It wasn't a problem. Oh, did you? Yeah. Do you no, think no, this no. will make more people want to get onto electric? Do you think it's a bit of a conspiracy? Do you, do you? He thinks. You know, it's no, you know? I've learned. I've learned yeah. that it's not. No, no. Yeah. everything's about conspiracy. I mean, some of the <laughs> some of the stuff on social media I saw this week. There was um, there was one pub that put this placard outside its outside its pub. It said, uh, "Beer shortage here soon. Panic buy." <laughs> Where's that? I need to get, <laughs> yeah. need to get there now. And then the BBC had uh, Phil McCann as a reporter, didn't they? Did you see that? Phil McCann. Oh, I've not seen yeah, the reporter. Phil, Phil, Phil McCann. <laughs> yeah. It was actually captioned on the thing. Phil Perfect. McCann. That is his name. So, uh, so yeah. So um, let's talk about uh, what you've been up. Let's start with you, Gio. Just give us a, a couple of minutes on on where you've been this week. So Monday was at Fanuc, looking um, into the future of automation event that's on the, on the, the first to the fifth of November. So doing some preparation for that or interviews in, in preparation for that. So yeah, it's going to be a brilliant event. Loads of. Um, guest speakers, influencers that are going to be there um, during the week. Lots of new innovation and technologies, lots of their partners in, uh, there too. Um, one of my clients, Gom, are also going to be attending, which we discussed on the last podcast last Have week. Have they got plastic injection there, plastic injection moulding? They, they do 
Plastic yeah. injection moulding machines. So they've got loads of technologies. Have they on got them this. there though, because Paul and I don't have Fakuma in Germany in a couple of weeks. Yeah, they will have. They they'll have a complete spread of their product portfolio linked in either with their own automation or automation from other partners. And I think there's going to be about fifty partners there. I know we talk about but it frequently at this the show. Footfall's be... kind of increasing uh, drastically every day, so they're really encouraging people to book their slot and get their ticket now, so they they get a place. Mm. It's it's going to be that busy. I think that. For me, what really stood out was the, the, the robo drill with the I-10. So you've got div two different configurations there. You've got the tray, tray configuration or the uh, conveyor configuration. You can have it feed in one machine or two. Uh, but the, the other thing that really stood out was the, the, the different solutions for different applications. They're really kind of showcasing, you know, it's not just... One, bat, one product fits all. Mm. There's lots of different solutions for lots of different Well, it attracts. I mean, I know we, we come from very much a metal cutting environment in a lot of aspects, but manufacturing is, is much broader than that, isn't it? And when you look at some of the industries that they'll that there'll be people coming from the food industry, packaging, all of these things, because a lot of the sort of pick and place products are ideally suited the vision systems all of those really really fit perfectly into into keeping production lines going and automation the problem that we've all been encountering with automation lack of labor all of that this will really address a lot of those things i think that we should be learning off them companies because they've been using automation and they've been evolving their automation solutions for years as we have not in our industry really and um, so they've kind of mastered it to a certain degree so we can definitely um, learn a lot from that but we also looked at, at, at really valid points you know through automation, it's actually creating more jobs. It's it's keeping the business uh, afloat. It's making them more competitive. And these are really important points too. I think that, you know, we're looking at our industry now um, and we need to be, you know, really competitive, more competitive than ever, especially now after Brexit. And we talk about the, 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 the fuel crisis and everything else and, and the shortages. So we really need to be masters of our own destiny. And the only way we can do that is is to automate. So but it's going to be a brilliant you event. Said, I, th I think it was you, Gio, who said the other week, though, that UK engineers are not embracing automation. They're not embracing it enough. But the ones that are are really... So, for example, uh, yesterday I went to the WAF group. So they, they've been going for 40... One year. WAF. WAF group. WAF. WAF group. How's that WAF. spelled, Joe? Just let's... W-A-T-H. Um, but yeah, we, yesterday we went there. And Wolf. They, they've been going for 41 years. So we, yesterday I met the second and third generation of the, the family. Really big company, 40,000 square foot. Um, and they started the company by effectively buying stuff in and assembling it. But then they wanted to start selling their own products and they sit seen a, a gap in the market. So they started subcontracting that work out to, to make their own products. And it was only two years ago that they thought, why are we subcontracting out? Why don't we get full control within our own facility and start making it ourselves? So they've gone on a journey with Hass Automation UK. And from just only two years ago, they, they're now into fifth axis machining, uh, EC400, six pool, uh, six pallet horizontal machine, fully automated, the lathe I'm, with I'm a bar feeder. Think, do you want to give all this away or just wait for the videos? The videos will be, the videos, you've got to watch the videos. I'm not yeah, going so to give any, I'm not going to be giving but, but the point That's is, the, 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 the point <laughs> is though, the, the, the point, I'll just get straight to the point. The, oh, point, brilliant. the point is, it's fully automated yeah. and, and without that automation, it would not be as, nowhere near as successful as, yeah. and it's not about, trying to create more jobs men it's, it's about creating a business and then the people that are creating this process are the people that are the skilled people that ec 400 is good machine isn't it with those pallet <sighs> systems yeah Paul, see, he's, you yeah. would not believe when you see the video so easy it, it, all he cuts is is stainless 318 and it's quite a tough material and he's absolutely hammering it trachoidal milling it um, and the, the metal removal rates are phenomenal. He's only holding on, he's using the microlock system, he's only holding on a minimum of, of, of three millimeters, so maximum of three millimeters, and he's absolutely destroying uh, this In material. A good way. It, it, the, the metal removal rates are phenomenal. There's no vibration. The, Gio, the work Gio, holding, Gio, you're giving it all You've got to watch the videos. <laughs> coming we soon. We'll be coming to the coming channel soon. soon. Uh, so uh, just to remind you, we, we, we will be talking shortly about emo and where we're going to be um, and where you can catch us next week at the Milan Show. Um, Colin, uh, automation, you've been doing a fair bit on the Citizen Open House. When's that coming around the corner? You know what? 12th to 14th of October. Absolutely brilliant. It's the fifth 
anniversary of LFE, which, as you've seen, let me t tell you about some of the videos we've done. No, I won't do that. But <laughs> they, you know, the phrase like game changer, it, apps, it has been. Another phrase that's just come out is keeping that door closed. I, I really like and, that one. I yeah, do that, really yeah. like yeah. that. You know, we, we, we hear so many phrases and there's yeah. some that last the test of time and some that really you go oh, wow that that's no, quite that meaning that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, like that, that, that was yeah. my idea is that because you can't open it or is that just because <laughs> you, you, you don't need to open it yeah, yeah, that means you can never find the button no you, mm. don't, you don't need to remove the bird's nest so just yeah. keep that door closed and it's running how many all day? times does that happen when we go out I'm always, the amount of times I spend looking at machines going hey, where's the door open button it's yeah. so frequent isn't it you get, you know, you're trying to get we don't need to anymore we've got LFE and what else I've got some fantastic machines M532 which is just a state there is no Limit the only limit to what part, what parts you can make is your imagination and the size. All right, GA, and come so. on now. Well, it's 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 quite close for you because you were doing the thing on the M25 this week, weren't you? Well, glue my hands. Yeah, you God, don't you do that? <laughs> Get off camera. Oh, you better. Oh, I can feel my. I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm older they, than they you. They I can feel my blood pressure. They, they peeled you yeah, off like then, a big banana. Re really good point going on. What? Um, but you'd be amazed how strong Gorilla Grip is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong chew. Out. No, that's another story. That's not. That's for off, off film as well. Anyway, go on. Your your point about keeping the door closed, forgot to mention on that EC four hundred, really nice feature that it's got that I didn't know about. This is the last part is, of the video. Is, that, that's a bit, but it's, it was a really permanent point that that, that I've got to keep permanent or pertinent. Pertinent. Thank you. Um, the the tooling you can change it at the back of the machine while the machining still goes. So if you've got you want to put assisted tooling or be changing the, you can do that without stopping the machine. It's all yeah. So that's quite a brilliant. Good point. Brilliant. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to talk about sort of five or six of the, the highlights that have been on the website this week in a minute. And of course, it's going to be a collective discussion. So feel free to chip in. Before we do that, let's just conclude on what we've done and where we've been this week. Because I just want to mention going to Mazak early part of this week, looking at their new QTE range, which is um, what they class as an entry level turning centre, which they've only brought out literally a couple of months ago. And they've already have it that they're, they're already need more stock to come in because people want to buy into the, uh, to the Mazak brand and obviously get a pretty cost of cost effective and efficient turning center videos on that will be coming to our channel soon. Cause we're also at emo next week, looking at that machine and the VCE and the VCN models of three axis VMCs in more detail too. Um, and then Gia, where else were you this week? You said earlier, uh, just in, in the studio with, with Mike, Mike Harris from Bison doing some tech. So what jokes did you get from that? Some bad ones. Oh, oh, right. did he, ones. Can you actually be airable? Um, please, no, that piece I can't remember. The, sorry, Mike. But <laughs> he, I thought he'd have been busy this week because it, it was, was a good one. He wasn't said, he, wasn't remember. it the uh, premiere of his new new film this week? But it's not a new James Oh, Bond yeah, out. he loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He did, he did tell a joke that. actually, but it's too I can't see too racy. It's yeah, it's too, bit, or too bad. bad. Talking about jokes, I went to see Ricky Gervais on Saturday night. Absolutely excellent, really, really, really good. 60 minutes that's all normally you go into these theaters and you expect you know, you get and you. It says half seven, you get there and you think he's not going to come on till half eight and then he's going to be there till t literally get there at half seven, 20 to eight, he was on. By 20 to nine, he was off. But the hour was just, you couldn't, he, would, he doesn't allow people to get up and go to the toilet. You're just not allowed. Brilliant. So yeah. Where was this? It was at the London Palais. And he was good. Oh, he was just, it was just brilliant. You wouldn't want to go, go at it if you've got some fairly, um, what's the word? And not L political. Liberal? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yes. Something woke, like if you're woke. Oh, don't go near it. Okay, no. so you no. can't, if you're non-binary, because no. they are non-binary. I'll, I'll stop me there because yeah, I'm going to get on the bandwagon. Um, that's enough of comedians. Uh, Mark 3D, we've seen quite a few of these um, videos from Joe that he's done here in Technical Corners. It's been on, on, the, on the website this week, Metal Printing where you can change over. I didn't realize this. This is definitely a video worth watching. If you're looking at doing metal printing, but changing from materials to materials, you can change from stainless to copper in less than five minutes. Now you'd normally associate with a metal 3D printer. It could take 24 hours to change all you need to change within them to go from a metal to a metal. And it's often been one of the barriers to entry. So that's a, that's a good video. Uh, there's also a video from Prototype Productions from uh, Star GB where we look at the differences between the SR20J2 and the SR20. Basically, you're talking about a machine that's now faster, heavier. It's got HFT, you yeah. know, like the, the, the chip breaking software we're talking about. It's more powerful, it's faster, and it's heavier. But this machine alone, compared to the SR20 at Prototype Productions, has cut the cycle time of their part by 20%. So, so new technology, basic new, new, new upgraded yeah. machine, you know, heavier, faster, 
Uh, so if you if you are a star user and you're looking at an SR20 or you've got an SR20J, but you're thinking about going up to a J2, there's lots of differences there on the machine, more tools, a Y axis and so forth. Now, I'm going to, uh, I know I keep coming to you, Gio, but one of the other videos that was on this week um, that's worth watching was the compensating forge or chuck from Tame. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, so it's uh, so irregular shapes, really, or rectangular parts. So it basically parts. grips, doesn't it, with two jaws? Yeah, and then the other two jaws come in, and um, and then they 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 they're sort yeah. of floating, aren't they? Or they yeah, they'll, they'll, the, the the first two will come in and centralise the part like a centric centric gripper, but they're not clamping it really tight. And then the other two will come in and, and centralise it that way, so it's bringing whatever irregular shape part into the center of the chuck effectively if that makes D sense. Dave Handley said in this video that he reckons that the three jaw three jaw chuck has had its day and people will only ever in the going in the future sometime only ever use these sort of chucks would you agree? Not sure. I don't know. Mm. Uh, because a lot a lot you know I, I agree if you're doing if you're looking to turn irregular shape parts and round parts but if you're only turning round parts then probably not. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get that because if you're doing billets, uh, you know, square billets and then round billets, then it's perfect because you haven't got to change your work holding on your lathe. But if you're only doing round billets, then there's no need really, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Four jaw chuck, Colin. It's not four jaws that you chuck. It's four jaws. Honestly, if, <laughs> please don't try and do the dad jaws. <laughs> Have you been to the uh, Mike Brown School of Daggering? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Harris. That's what I meant. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know, Mike Brown. Uh, okay, now, um, yeah, there's also another product that was on the website this week that Joe did with DC Swiss, which is a, a coffer tool which deburs uneven castings <coughs> and convex sorry. castings. So basically, you've got a tube. You've got, imagine like a tube. Hold on. Right? And you imagine yep. <laughs> you drill a hole in the tube. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> got it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then underneath, you imagine as you go as you drill through, oh, the, the, it's the a back chamfer tool. Ba it's a back chamfer tool. Is, is, yeah. that, is that what it is? Yeah, I didn't need to well, do all that imagining. It, I know it's called right coffer deburr for deburring. To it, but same thing. It's kind of that, but, but it's, it's on a radius. It follows a form. It follows a form. Yeah, so it follows the form. So basically, because that 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 pipe yeah it's is round it's, but it's round inside as well isn't it yeah so exactly it's, it's the opposite way when you're coming back from yeah yeah, yeah so it sort of follows the form but whatever that irregular irregular form is these tools will follow quite how they work i think they're spring loaded aren't they yes i think they're so. spring loaded can i, can I just suggest people yeah. watch a video because i'm sitting here watching you two yeah. try and describe it and my imagination it, is we may put ragged. an overlay over the top if you're watching this but it is uh, <laughs> certainly if you if you are have got uneven castings or convex castings and you want to because uh, I mean if you take things we've all done it you take things off machines you've got to deburr them you've got the health and safety issues you cut your fingers um, you know and if it's what I'm thinking it's a, 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 a spring loaded blade in the tool so as it goes down the, it, the, it springs in but it chamfers it and then as it comes up they've got the blade at the other side and it does exactly the same it's spinning as well at the same time so it's have a watch. get the video up S yeah, I, don't, video I might be wrong so, but some, yeah. Yeah. Some, a bit like that video um, coming soon I would suggest. one of the best performing videos on the MTD CNC website this week what do you think it was mine no yeah. unfortunately uh, Geo, you uh, mark DMG Mori's NXH5000 horizontal mm. machine in centre with its twin pallets. Mm. 20,000 RPM spindle. Not Remember the one with you did the together. NHX. Yeah, brilliant machine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely fantastic machine. I Persuading think... people to go from vertical to horizontal. It's the big topic of conversation. Uh, well, even from fifth axis to, to horizontal. I mean, again, WAF Group went from a fifth axis UMC to a horizontal because they wanted that unmanned running. So they're using their fifth axis now for their kind of one-offs prototype work and now they're putting all of their really? high volume work through because it's still you can still do six-sided work but all done all know, engineers and, and the americans are swear by it you know but so all engineers aspire to be able to get a five axis it, yeah but now and again he'll do fifth axis simultaneous work yeah. on, on his fifth axis which you need the fifth axis for but he's not doing simultaneous fifth axis work every single application day application specific most of the time it's three plus two so it on the uh, or four plus one on the horizontal, you've got all full fifth, full, full fourth axis, but in two operations, you can still do six-sided work. So, but you can present so much more components to the spindle, yeah. and you've always got the spindle turning. Always, mm. you know, if you're using the machine correctly. So yeah. it never. So stops. you might not be doing it one op, but you, you're able to. Load you can't up. do one up on a fifth axis. Yeah. Still got to be two ops. Oh, right. yeah. Smarty pants on the video. It, yeah, it'll be on there. Okay, yeah. it'll be on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, let's move on to Emo next week. So on Sunday, eight of us will fly out from Gatwick Airport. So avoid be, Gatwick like the plague. We're going to be. Um, we've all. I've, 
you'll be well, you won't be on the M25 at that point, though, will you? No, I'm, getting tra- I'm getting the tra- well, <laughs> I'm getting the tra- train down. <laughs> Don't you dare go blocking us up. No, I've loaded M25. up with Gorilla Glue. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be travelling down. We'll be flying out from Gatwick, going to uh, to Milan. We are at Emo for four days next week. There is eight of us. Um, <sighs> just a quick overview as w- of what we'll be doing. We're looking to be doing a lot of social media while we're, we're while we're over there, as we always do. But we're, we've also got two live broadcasts. One of which is from um, Tornos on Monday afternoon at 2.30, which will actually be 3.30 p.m. UK time, but it will be 2.30 European time. There's four technologies that we'll be looking at over there. Um, and we'll have more detail on the channel about what those technologies are, but we'll be streaming live from 2.30, uh, talking to um, guys that really know about the, the technology when it comes to turning, because that is what Tornos is well-renowned for. When you say turning, sliding head technology. Sliding head technology, uh, you know, one-hit machining, uh, making parts aggressively, quickly, reliably. That really yeah. is what Tornos is about. So we're looking forward to that live well, they've got, stream. They've got a new range, DT range. The DT range. And we'll they've got at. an upgraded Swiss Deco with a bar millimetre of? The, is it 42? Ah, you know your stuff. Yeah. And finally, well, watch a video, obviously. Um, they well, watch have, us live. The multi-Swiss can now do... I'll tell you what, I'll give them a clue here. Uh, longer bar lengths. Yep, that's yep. it. Absolutely yep. brilliant. The, the, the technology that comes out of Tornos, it's, a, it's such a, uh, you know, a formidable brand. I think they've been making machines for, you know, 100 years or so. That was they, uh, they really do have some, some, some technology that is uh, very, very advanced. They're based in the UK now at the Seco uh, yes. facility. The Premier uh, Machine Tools. The Premier Machine yeah. Tools. So uh-huh. that if people want to go down and, and take them or challenge them to, to, to kind of turn their well, parts, yeah, it's wor- worth good, them. Good place and good people yeah. to contact. I mean, we'll be doing a lot of that on Monday. We'll be challenging them, looking at the machines, looking at the applications, talking to their customers that are on the stand. Well, we're reviewing all their machines. We're reviewing all well. their machines. That as will well be well streamed live, live at 2 o'clock on uh on Monday, or sorry, 2.30 Italian time, Monday afternoon. So 1.30 UK time. Uh, 3.30, I think. It's the other way. Uh, no. Oh, it's the other way, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, We've got our flight times correct. European <laughs> time. Uh, on Tuesday, we also have another live stream, this time from Fanuc, and that is 11.30 Italian time. And this time, we'll be talking to the CEO from Fanuc. Uh, he'll be joining us live. The theme is very much about the automated factory, similar to what we'll be seeing at their event in November as well. We'll be covering all of their technologies from their robots, their Fanuc Robo drills, their Robo cuts. Uh, we'll be looking at the digitization, the software, the IoT. All of this is coming live at 11.30 for an hour on Tuesday morning from Emo. They're the live streams that we'll do, be doing early part of the week. We're also looking at doing some other lives as the week unfold. But there's also plenty of other places that you can find us because on Tuesday, uh, we are also filming at Mazak in the afternoon. And then myself and Joe are attending, um, a, a, a kindly invited to a dinner with Mazak, where we'll be going to oh. Leonardo da Vinci's gallery, which would be amazing. Places. That would be absolutely. Don't nick right anything, there. Paul. Um, I don't know what happened wow, last I mean, time? I, you know, that, that would be did he amazing. Draw? It was a Renaissance man. Paint. Was it a Renaissance man? Paint. The way he's paint. Christ. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh my God! Uneducated. <laughs> 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 I'm very well cultured. That would be amazing. Hold on. Yeah. I'm also on Tuesday. Some of, we're also doing some work as well. Uh, yeah, not, Philly not just Paul and Joe <laughs> schmoozing with Leonardo. Yeah. How are you? We're going. We're having a wander around with Leader Chuck. We're going to Cookie, Cookie Giovanni. Do you know what they do? I don't know. They Absolutely. certainly do. Mul- well, multi spindle. I'm looking forward to find out more about them and lengths and profiles and things like that. Balance system. Balance systems. We had Frankie here, who was most elegant, well, well, looking around here, the most well-dressed man who's ever been in this. He does balance systems, so spindle monitoring, great, oh, great I've systems. Seen, yeah, yeah seen, absolutely. Seen. File. Do you know what they do? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a clue. Chucks. Come oh, on, good lord! And I just <laughs> had a fantastic list. We've got a few people watching in the show now. It's all all the podcasts, but. Give me a shake of the head or another head. Did you learn much about live sensors and face-driven um, things? Yeah, that was a definite no. See, I didn't know <laughs> what they were. So I asked Gio, and his explanation was... Awful. Oh, no, no that's <laughs> not fair, Gio. That really is not fair. It was worse than that. But we're going to find out more about that at Ten- Technology FRB. And you tucked me up for a video, because let's just clarify. Paul, you're going to the email, aren't you? Mm. Colin, talk to yourself. I'm going to it. Yeah, I'm going to email. <laughs> yep. What are you doing, Gio? I'm staying in the UK. Wow, yes. brutal. Who's doing your jobs for you, Gio? Uh, you and wow. But he is part, he's doing ours for us here. Is yeah, it fair, okay. fair I fair know. Fair I'm, fair I'm, I'm pulling your leg, Gio. We're also on Lang on Tuesday afternoon. Yes. We'll be uh, on the Lang. We've also got Coria, who will be visiting That's and looking at Wednesday, some of their um, yeah, travelling column and bed oh, Can we go machines. back to Tuesday, though? SMW? 
Yeah, on the CV500 at Ma on the Mazak stand. So they've yep. got a, a bespoke kind of well, standard work holding package yep. for that machine um, mm. that, is, that is new. So Modular system, watch this video. Don't yeah. give too much away. No. Watch, watch this video that I'm doing. Yeah. What you say Wednesday, sorry? Uh, so then on Wednesday, we are on Renishaw stand for um, the day. Also WFL. They're going to be huge machines that we'll be seeing there. Multitasking, it's Simon I'm there. sure. I'm sure Simon will be there. Excellent. Uh, we're also uh, on the Parper stand, and that will be on Thursday. But there's one other place we're going to be on the on the Wednesday, Colin. You can pronounce this better than me. Yeah, Jones Technology. No, I'm joking. It's uh, Jing Zhao, I think. And I, I mean, Mr. Wang, if I pronounce that incorrectly, I do apologise, but that's... What, I'll be learning what all machines about are we looking at? Five, we're axis, like five axis machines. They are new to me, I've got to be honest. So I'm really looking forward to A, researching them even more because that was thrown at me about 10 minutes ago. But looking forward to learning about those and finding out more about them and showcasing their products. I have had a look at the machines. They do look absolutely phenomenal. They're okay, really so new. plenty more going on um, at Emo next week. It's going to be a really busy week. Of course, you can contact us uh, via inquiries at mtdcnc. Um, dot com if you are interested in us visiting your stand at emo but beware i have to say at this stage it looks like we are um we really are you know we've got so much to cover in just four days but um, we'll do our best uh, to accommodate uh, your requirements um gentlemen we're going to wrap this one up shortly uh, any final thoughts for the week just maybe what you're going to be up to next week geo because it's not all about emo is it so i'm going to be back at fanuc looking at some well they're actually building up that their 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 arena, if you like, or the showroom. Yeah. So when I went there last week, um, this week, it was empty. So hopefully they'll have a few more products in there. It's going to be completely interactive. So they've, they've changed their display that they've had there before. So I'm not going to give everything away, but hopefully we can kind of review cool. a few more products. Every other, every other um, video and then the Herco Open House um, as well that we're going to be visiting. Where they've got um, new machines, you're going to be there. And yeah. we've also got uh, some breaking news in the fact that we have a new starter yeah starting with us on Tuesday. So if you're listening and watching or watching this, you'll be able to um, see who that is. Who's He's going to be uh, another another addition to the MTD Excellent. CNC team. It's very, very exciting. It's exciting times at MTD CNC at the moment. Um, certainly now as things have opened up a bit and events are starting to happen, uh, we're overseas. We come back from Italy next week and we're literally flying to Germany a few days later to uh, well, the Fukuma, Fukuma yes. show uh, where we'll be doing some um, oh, plastic that. injection moulding with... Fanuc. With Fanuc again, once again. So, And then there's a possibility that we'll be going um, over to Spain, to factories over in Spain. So everything is kind of, you know, it just seems that the world is, I don't know, just seems to be a lot more accommodating in terms of travel. Let's just hope none of us go down with um, COVID between now and, oh, don't. Uh, and Sunday. Well, we're all double jabbed and, around here, aren't we? Yeah, and keep an eye out for the social media because we're going to be doing our best to... Um, to make, <laughs> to make sure that uh, we keep you up to date with what's happening with us at Emo next week. And ask us, on that social media, ask us if, you, if there's something you know that's at Emo that we can maybe quickly pop in. I mean, I'm not so... If it's technology, we want to see it. Yeah, if it's technology, we want to see it. Yeah, please. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, gentlemen. We might not see you this time next week because we might be broadcasting. We may do this on Thursday evening as we leave Emo, possibly. Oh. It depends on... How much the legs are aching, and you know whether we'll do it from the airport. How the how the voices are, maybe do it. A couple of airport. cheeky bevies. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll uh, speak to you again soon. That's it for this week's MTD podcast. Uh, join us again. Uh, we will broadcast this next Friday, but as I said, it might not be shot Friday. It might be done from Emo on Thursday. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.